Thank you very much. Good evening and a warm welcome to Clydesdale Cricket Club in Glasgow for Long Hop Down Under. On tonight's show, broadcaster Alison Walker, Scotland assistant coach Duncan Hodge, former Scotland bowler John Blaine. We also speak to former Zimbabwean and Pollock cricketer Gavin Ewing and the BBC Scotland Cricket Club are in the Bowl Off Challenge. Another great half an hour coming up after what's been another great week at the ICC Cricket World Cup. Hosts New Zealand and Australia played to a nail-biting climax at Eden Park. India and Sri Lanka gathered momentum with crushing defeats of the UAE and England. But the week really belonged to South Africa. Two massive 400-plus totals with their skipper A.B. de Villiers posting a simply sublime 162 off just 66 balls. If you'd like to give us your views on those performances or anything else in tonight's show, then you can tweet us at QTV underscore sports with the usual hashtag follow Scotland. Now, at 20 years old, our first guest this evening was one of the leading wicket takers in the 1999 Cricket World Cup. He was also, until recently, the holder of a long-standing record as Scotland's all-time leading wicket taker. Let's hope he doesn't hold too much against Majid Hack for stealing his record. Please welcome John Blaine. Finger me out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, sit down, sit down. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Um, we'll start where we always start uh, with our first guest, and that's to look back at Scotland's most recent performance against Afghanistan. Just give us your headlines on that particular match. It was certainly a missed opportunity. Um, we, we played some really good cricket. I think that's a positive thing to say at the outset, but um, it really was a missed opportunity. That was our cup final. Uh, I think that's what the guys really came to World Cup for, um, and what the public were looking for us to really have a strong performance in that um, in that match. But uh, there were some positive signs, but uh, we just made decisions, wrong decisions at, at, at uh, critical times, I well, think. Talk about the positives, uh, first of all. Where, where did we go right, and then let's look at where we went wrong. Well, I thought we, we regrouped well. Um, Majid and um, Ali Evans batted well towards the end there. So the tail wagged, and that's something you're always looking for in the batting order. Um, I thought we bowled really well. Ali Evans, again, mentioning him, he's had a, a fabulous 12 to 18 months and really has reaped the rewards for the hard work he's put in, and I thought he bowled beautifully. Um, and we, I thought we bowled, uh, you know, historically Scotland's had a strong bowling attack and um, we've been quite disciplined with the ball and that carried through into into the Afghanistan match and um, yeah, we were strong in that respect but I just, I think we made some um, poor decisions towards the back end of the innings um, whether it was a collective decision or an individual decision, I'm not quite so sure but um, I'd like to have seen Majid bowl his overs out and then uh, the captain asked the, the seamers just to finish the game off um, and bowl you know, block hole and uh, close the game out, but uh, not to be. A missed opportunity as a whole, but w within the match itself, and particularly towards the end, uh, some specific missed opportunities with runouts and, and catches that um, has been maybe a telltale sign of the team throughout the tournament. Even if we go back to the first game against New Zealand. Yeah, but if you look at that as your house, I mean, these are these are these are minor things, catches and. Uh, and runouts and, and all the things that go with good bowling. Um, I, I like to think that uh, the bowling and the discipline that's involved with, with that is, uh, is the main foundation um, of, the, of the team and um, catches a result of, of how the bowlers uh, perform. But um, no, there has been lots of positive. If you look back, uh, Jack, th this team in 2013 October were really struggling. You know, we came mm -hmm. seventh in the T20 qualifiers. Yeah, um, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> And um, you know, within a year, we were beating Wellington and uh, and and Tasmania. I think was it Tasmania? Yeah. Um, you know, within a year, the guys made some really good strides. So there is positive in that respect. Well, look back at your career as well with Scotland. You've represented Scotland both in 1999 and 2007. That's right. How, how does that? Compare how does your experience compare? Do you think to the experience that these guys have in the tournament? It's changed a lot in that time. Well, the, the, you only have to look at scoring rates in the last week or so, or two weeks. But um, yeah, the tournament has changed. But uh, logistics-wise, the guys will be having an absolutely fabulous time. I mean, uh, I saw they're off doing some uh, uh, horse racing or something in their time I'm off. I'm not sure they were on the horses. Well, so, but um, backing a few poor horses, probably. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, the, the terms of logistics, the facilities are first class, um, the, the, the transports, the hotels, 
Um, the opportunities that are given to the guys is fantastic. Then you get the cricket. I mean, the cricket is a full houses um, in front of 10, 15 cameras. It's absolutely yeah. fabulous. Um, and just a great memory. And the guys won't realise it, and I probably didn't realise it at the time. It's, it's, it's the pinnacle of your career, yeah. although it is a World Cup. I you really need to think we've got some clips of you just to uh, have a, a look at those. Um, but uh, it, here's you. I think this is you fielding. Excellent stop. I'm not sure about the camera work, mind you. Was Mike Stanger on that camera, do you think? <laughs> I think it was, actually. It possibly was. Oh, here's a wicket. Um, that was oh, this is against... Is that against Bangladesh? That's the ones you're always bowling for, caught me on. That's the match. Uh, and the aforementioned Majid Hack taking, taking the catch there. Now, Majid's obviously just surpassed your own record uh, as Scotland's all-time leading wicket taker. Obviously, you wish him nothing but the best, but it's your record. You've got a, maybe a, a little twinge of sadness at passing the baton. There was a little <laughs> twinge of sadness, because uh, you know how hard you work to get that. But Majid couldn't go to a better uh, performer. He's, uh, He's a good guy. Um, he's given a lot to the cause for Scottish cause over the, over the, over the last uh, ten dozen years, um, and he's a lovely individual as well. And I think it's uh, it's fitting that he goes to such a good guy. So no, he's, he's done well and he's bowled well. He's been Scotland's talisman for a lot of years, um, and um, he still he still is. So well done to him. Uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about Bangladesh uh, in a short while, but for the time being, ladies and gentlemen, John Blaine. So this week, the Scotland squad headed north to Nelson and to warmer climes. Our crew uh, were able to accompany them on some much-needed R&R, which proved a stern test for their sea legs. Nelson sits on New Zealand's Sunshine Coast and basks in the best weather the country has to offer. It's a place that has a relaxed continental cafe culture, while its beaches and marine life drive a thriving tourist industry. The Abel Tasman National Park is famous as a spot of natural beauty. People flock here to kayak the coast and walk the trails amidst the forest. Nelson then, an ideal place for the Scotland side to recharge the batteries with a fishing trip out on the Tasman Bay. <laughs> I think I feel it better than some of the people in there, but it was a bit of a rough one, yeah. That's, that's the worst I've ever felt. That was up there with food boys. Beginner's luck or natural talent? A touch choppy perhaps for one or two of the squad, but with a fresh catch they head home and back to the serious business of the Cricket World Of the Cricket World Cup. Uh, well, let's hope Scotland take their catches tonight. Oh. No? Oh. I'm here all week. Uh, seriously, uh, on a serious point though, uh, John, the R&R the &R on those long trips, those the rest days and the team bonding is crucially important. It is crucial. It's crucial for the guys to get some downtime. But actually, from a team dynamic, it's important the guys spend some time together because that's really where it's, 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 it's formed. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had some really, really enjoyable times what, on tour. What, what was your particular favourite thing to do in um, your downtime? Oh, I used to, I, I was always roommate with Paul Hoffman, so we slept, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, we did, we just, uh, because we were working so hard during the day, we used to, to enjoy room service together, but uh, most of the guys used to go off and do catamarans and jet skiing and all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, Imagine the golf's quite popular The as golf well. is popular. Especially when they go out to Dubai and... Dubai, trips, yes, yeah. the guys, Gavin <laughs> Hamilton used to like the golf, Ryan Watson. Um, and uh, it used to cause a bit of friction, that's the problem for these days. Well, I played with Ryan Flanagan and Matt Parker once in Dubai, and that's the angriest round of golf I think I've ever ah, played a couple in of, couple of cowboys there. watching. Mm -hmm. um, our second guest tonight is uh, someone who's made a career out of being on tour, following Scots sportsmen and women around the world. Uh, she's seen a fair number of uh, calamities in that time, and I'm sure triumphs as well. Here to tell us about them, Alison Walker. Hello. I don't, I don't, you too. 
Oh, oh, thank you. I thought you'd. Uh, I thought you'd possibly. You do. I thought you'd possibly you. changed your mind there when I saw you at the end of the corridor <laughs> coming through. It's all happening in that green room, you know. Um, I, I joke in the intro about uh, Scottish sporting calamities that you must have seen, but uh, in actual fact, your varied career has uh, taken in some real sporting highlights for Scotland. Oh yeah, oh gosh, there's been so many. I've been very lucky to be there at key moments for for Scottish athletes, and I think the one that one that the first one that struck me was Yvonne Murray uh, at the Commonwealth Games in Victoria, winning, winning the ten thousand metres. It was my first major sporting event, and I was watching Yvonne on that track and interviewing her afterwards, and I could I, I could almost feel my heart bursting, bursting with pride that here was a Scots girl that had done something absolutely amazing, and a woman as well because you know, making the highlights for, for a females not, not, as, not as often uh, as men. And then Chris Hoy um, in Manchester winning Commonwealth gold for Scotland. And he's, a, okay, we see him a lot in a GB vest, but in a Scottish vest, he, he is just so patriotic mm. as well. And we didn't think, the timing was quite strange for that because we didn't think that particular race was going to be live on air at the same time that Radio Scotland were on for the BBC. And actually, I was just standing there with a the phone, and the, and the race was about to get underway. I ended up doing live commentary on Chris's race, and actually, my voice went off the octave <laughs> because it was so high pitched and excited. But it was really motion, and then at the end of it, it was the sweatiest hug from Chris Hoy <laughs> I have ever had in my entire life. But there's been so sweatiest many. Sweatiest for him, or sweatiest <laughs> for you? <laughs> no, well, I wasn't. What, what was I doing? I was reporting. I was doing the easy bit. Um, but it was just fabulous. And if, you, if you're a patriotic Scot and you love sport, then you yeah. want to see the team do well. And when it happens, it's just the best feeling. I, I can remember that. If I, I watched that Yvonne Murray race. I can remember. And it was the look, of, I think, a combination of sheer exhaustion and, and relief in her face. Because she threw both her arms up in the air, didn't she? And it was just almost almost cried that it was over. It was a, fanta a fantastic moment. Yeah, the expression moment. on, on her yeah. face is, is one, right. one to remember because she must have been absolutely exhausted. And yeah. she was, and she, she, she tried her heart out, and she won, it was great. As I said, it's a, it's a varied career you've had broadcasting, and you know we can see some of the, the highlights on screen just now uh, with, with some of Scotland's Commonwealth athletes, and um, Usain Bolt looks delighted. <laughs> I had to chase him, I had to chase him <laughs> down the, can you believe, I chased Usain Bolt down the track. <laughs> <laughs> but he, unfortunately, because he was so busy doing selfies, that um, he actually stopped. Stop. But, I'd, <laughs> but I'd briefed him in the in the Hamden tunnel area beforehand. I said, look, I want to try and get a word with yeah. you after you get your medal. And he's got, oh, no problem, no problem. I thought, you know, they say that, but they that don't one. necessarily mean it. Then, of course, he got caught up in the wave of it. And I thought, I am not going to lose him. I am not going to, I'm going to get this interview, whether it kills me. So I was chased after him and managed to stop. And you can see I'm actually, well, it's like we're doing the Gay Gardens. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but I've got him and I'm, I am not, not letting, letting him go. go. <laughs> you are going to speak whether you like it or not. And it was nice because he set the record straight about all the, the bad PR yeah, beforehand. Yeah. So well, uh, it was a, great. As a Scots broadcaster, though, it must have been particularly rewarding for you uh, at the Commonwealth Games. It must have been one of your career highlights last year for Glasgow 2014. It was, and, and especially working at Hamden and doing the interviews and doing the comparing at Hamden Park because we saw some great... Um, Ailey Child and Lindsay yeah. Sharp and, yeah, and nice all these too. fantastic, fantastic moments and the Scots team did really, really well um, and I knew Glasgow, I knew Scotland would put on a good games but I didn't actually think it would be as good as it was. It was just fantastic and it was great to see the city and the country alight talking about sport. I wish we could have something else like that again. The other thing you've been involved in last year and, and this year is Scottish Women in Sport. Tell us a bit about that and your role. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm one of the co-founders and uh, it's just to try and get more young girls participating in sport. We want more coverage for women's sport, for female athletes in newspapers. We've got some great female athletes with, with great stories, but it's not getting covered all that much. And I think if we had more coverage on television, on mainstream media, then young girls would feel inspired. You don't necessarily have to get there and be an elite athlete like, you know, like these guys, but you know, enjoy your sport and be active. Mm. And, you know, we need to try and get that out there. There are some fairly damning statistics when it comes to women's sport in terms of the percentage of coverage that's devoted to it. But uh, I think the one that uh, hit home with me is that 5% of commercial revenue in sport is for women's sport. Yeah, and that's, and that's shocking. And if young girls don't see, don't see it on the telly and don't see it in the newspapers, what are they? You can't be it mm. if you can't see it. Mm -hmm. 
and I think that's very, very relevant. So trying to change the, the philosophy. But you, you yourself are a keen golfer. Could you ever have been a cricketer? Well, I did play as a little bit as a child. My, <laughs> my, I, I'm actually half English, and my, my mum's side of the family is from Yorkshire. Uh, my gran, my gran was a big Geoffrey Boycott fan. And we Someone used to, has to be. We used to, we used to <laughs> tease, we used to tease my gran. We used to imitate Geoffrey Boycott when he used to say, "I've dedicated my life to cricket." You know, <laughs> and we we used to we used to tease with that. She, said, she, said, he says, she used to say he's the best golfer on the planet. Golfer, he's the best cricketer on the planet. Yeah. So we used to tease her with that. I used to play a little bit on the village green, but I wasn't. I had got quite good coordination, well, but Well, maybe get you good. involved in the ball off before the end of the series. <laughs> Time <laughs> to move on. Uh, for now, though, ladies and gentlemen, Alison Walker. <laughs> Time now for the latest instalment of our Home and Away series. This week, unfortunately, we had to sacrifice video in order to reach our guest, former Pollock cricketer Gavin Ewing, who joined us from his home outside Bulawayo, in Zimbabwe. I'll start where I start with all our home and away guests by asking you to recall your time playing here in Scotland. What were your fondest memories? Well, I mean, just the opportunity to play at a club, a club like Pollock in a park, uh, amazing views, fantastic people, um, Massive rivalry with the, the team just down the lane, Clydesdale. I love the, the banter we used to have in those games. Um, I, I love Scotland. It was, it was a fantastic season. I'd like to think I did quite well. Um, and just great people, good uh, competition, and all-round good fun. The current Zimbabwe team are holding their own at the moment in the World Cup, but maybe lacking a killer instinct. What's been your assessment of their performance in their first three matches? Well, you know, I think the biggest letdown, unfortunately, has been the catching and, and the dead bowling. I mean, in every single game that we've bowled in the last 10, we've been hammered all around the ground. And it really hurts us, especially against uh, South Africa, Pakistan, and the UAE. What's your impression of Scotland at the World Cup? They came agonisingly close against Afghanistan. Is it a similar sort of feeling that you'd like to actually see them push on now and actually win a match? Yeah, I think they've always lived in the shadows of Ireland and all the other sides, Holland and that. And the fact that they got to the World Cup, everyone says, oh, that's a fantastic achievement. And sometimes you worry that teams then think they've done enough just by getting there. And you know, I watch the team play and there's some players who were only young boys when I went to Scotland and they've grown into fantastic cricketers and just little things haven't gone their way, which has hurt them. Uh, and I, look, it was really sad that they didn't win the other day against Afghanistan. I really thought they had it in the bag. But sadly, runouts and catches win matches. And, and that, yeah, it was really unfortunate. Our thanks to Gavin, and you can see the extended version of that interview on the QTV Cricket YouTube channel. Now, if there's one team in the world that empathises with Scotland's cricketers, then it's Scotland's rugby team. Here to indulge in some mutual consolation and encouragement is a one-time Calcutta Cup legend and the team's current assistant coach. Any Italians in the room? No? Excellent. Then please welcome Duncan Hodge. <laughs> a little bit of gentle ribbing uh, there, Duncan, but um, there are some startling parallels at the moment between the cricket team uh, and, and the rugby team. Zero from three in their respective competitions. What, what's going wrong for Scotland's rugby team at the moment? Um, well, we're certainly really close to the first two weeks and last week was our poorest performance under Vern Cotter and, you know, we've, we've paid the price and as the cricketers are finding out as well, it's, there's really fine margins at that level and we've, been <laughs> we've unfortunately been on the wrong end of them. We talked in the previous couple of shows about Scotland being a, a cricket team that are progressing, uh, that are almost uh, at, at the right level. Is, is the same true of the rugby team? Yeah, I think so, and I think um, there's there's a combination of things just need to go our way. We need a little bit of luck. We've, you know, when we miss some key players, that that hurts us. We're a country of sort of small resource, and um, and 
ultimately we've got a young team and we just need to have more experience at that top level and then hopefully we can progress and start winning more games of rugby, which is what it's all about. The, the, something that struck me about Scottish rugby his, historically, I suppose, in the last 10 years is um, the, the, the little things, it's little errors, handling errors, or just uh, it's the detail. And I, and I think that was what I was alluding to with John Asseng to go with the cricket team. How, when you reach that top level or when you're trying to achieve that top level, how crucial can those... Yeah, I mean, the pressure is huge at that level and that accounts for some of it. And yet, within any game of sport, there's, there's things we can't account for. You know, there's little things at the weekend there that they're really hard for us to explain. But pressure's got a massive part to play. Um, you know, because there, there's, there's pressure and expectation on, you know, all, all national teams. England up next for you a week on Saturday uh, allows us to cast our minds fondly back before we look forward. Um, a moment that will live long in your memory. Let's remind ourselves. McElhan leaves it back, and it's a try for Hodge. A remarkable score at the end of massive pressure by Scotland. No, not maybe not the quality sometimes, but for excitement, fantastic. Duncan Hodge is having a gala day. Five goals and a try. Scotland in the lead, knocked on, it will be as strange as the referee's whistle goal for the end of the match, and Scotland have won a pulsating game, and Jonathan, the, the man of the match for me would be the Scottish handoff with all the points, four penalty goals, a conversion and a try, would you believe? Yeah, I thought he was good. Look at that, a single-handed demolition of the old enemy. Oh, well received uh, in in the bar here. It, you look, oh, you're almost got glassy eyed watching <laughs> that. <laughs> what? Do, how does it make you feel watching it back? Uh, oh, it's it's nice to see the 50 yard try again. Anyway, um, <laughs> but no, it's 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 one of those things that will live with live with me forever. You know, it was, it was a great day. We were underdogs that day, um, and you know we got a bit of luck that day. A few things went for us, and. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great day. Can you, can you remember what was going through your mind at specific points in the game? Was there a point where you sort of caught yourself thinking, what if? Yeah, there was little things. Um, England were so strong that Delali was scored after about 25 minutes. And at that point, you thought, this is looking ominous. And then they had all the pressure. And then just before halftime, um, we turned the ball over on, on our own line and managed to get up to halfway. And we were in at um, halftime, only 9-8. Then the weather turned, and it was kind of... To be fair, it was kind of one-way traffic a bit in the second half, and we, we really got on top of them, and the pressure told on them. They started to make mistakes, you know, a bit like us last Saturday against Italy. You know, they made mistakes that weren't normal to them. Um, yeah, and the rest history. It's a demonstration, John, that, you know, even against bigger opposition or opposition that's expected to win, if you've got the right mentality, you can achieve anything, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's all about being positive, and, um, you know, certainly, uh, Duncan's touched on it, in major tournaments, pressure's a huge thing, in major matches, pressure's the the biggest uh, intervention, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a small margin for error, but uh, often pressure can do funny, funny things to sportsmen. Alison, you were going to come yeah, in, so. but The beauty about sport is, and this is why we all love it, is that the unpredictable and the unexpected can still happen, whatever the sport. Yeah. You may be the underdogs, but that upset can still happen. Scotland can still win a World Cup match, can yes. they? Yes, absolutely. And this could, could be the night. Could, could happen tonight, <laughs> absolutely. I love the positive, uh, positive mental attitude. Um, we might never have had that uh, moment, uh, Duncan, if your uh, choices as a young man had gone a different way, though. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of cricket. I played a lot of cricket with my, my dad when I was younger and then through school, and um, I was lucky enough to play some um, age group cricket for Scotland, and it was coming to a crunch point, and rugby sort of took over. Are you playing again now in, uh, after I've retirement? From uh, I, I organise a couple of social games and I play a bit in Edinburgh when I can. But um, Still yeah, it taps it's me for gear, actually. <laughs> 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 I got a text last week looking for a bat, actually. So. Right. Just speak to our floor manager, Peter. He collects them. What's the best <laughs> bit of your, your cricket? What's the best bit of your game? Uh, I was a batsman, I bowled a bit, but uh, I, loved, I loved batting and uh, we were discussing this earlier, I mean the thing I loved about cricket was that it's a team game, so you still get all the benefits of a team game, yet ultimately as a batsman you're still in control, yep. as a bowler against a batter and you know, that's, that's why it was such an appealing sport to me. Great stuff. More from Duncan in a minute. For now ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm reception to Duncan Hodge.
Time to turn our attention to Bangladesh and Scotland have had some success in the past against tonight's opponents. Earlier this week, Nick Rugby caught up with Richie Barrington and Craig Wright for some positive reinforcement. 2012 against Bangladesh, you obviously um, knocked that century. Happy memories of playing against uh, against this side. Yeah, obviously great memories getting a getting our first win. Although it was in a T20, you know, against a full member side, so. We've all got fond memories of that and it'd be, it'd be great to, to create some more memories on Thursday. Does this mean you've got the measure of the Bangladeshi bowlers? You're, you're looking forward to facing them again? Oh, look, it's, been, it's been a couple of seasons now since, since we last played them, so there might be a few, a few new faces in there. Um, but I think you know we've, we've got a, a lot of footage on these guys and stuff, so we'll, we'll be well prepared going into the game. 2004, Bangladesh, Scotland were the, very much the, the up-and-coming associate nation at that point. Um, was that a missed opportunity, do you think, when you ran them pretty close back in the day? Um, I'm not so sure if 2004 was a missed opportunity. I think 99 World Cup, when we lost to them a game uh, and from memory that we, we certainly should have won, I think that was the missed opportunity uh, because it was just after that that Bangladesh got given uh, test status and, and full, uh, full ODI status. Um, so by the time we got to 2004, they had had test status and ODI status for, I think, four years. We didn't at that stage, but we showed, I think, in the games we played in 2004, as we had done back in, in 1998, I think it was, when we beat them 2-0 in, in Scotland, that you know, in our own conditions we were you know, at least a match for them. Um, obviously that game in 99 in the World Cup hurt us in terms of the perception of, of where we were compared to compared to them because they then went on to beat Pakistan I think in the, in the World Cup and, and got full status so uh, so yeah I think I think any time we've played them in our own conditions the games have been really tight and we've probably had the upper hand any time we've played them in Bangladesh you know they're, they're, a, they're a far different proposition hopefully here in, in, uh, in neutral conditions it's, it's a far more even game and, and we've got a great chance couple of uh, unorthodox looking shots there from uh, Craig Wright, John, um, who looks like he's just walked out of the snow in Glasgow. Um, you played in that 99 game. Uh, Craig described it as a missed opportunity. Uh, in the wider context of Scottish cricket and how the Scottish games developed and the Bangladeshi games developed, was it a missed opportunity? It was a real opportunity for us to put a stake in the ground and say, here we are. Um, they went on and... Uh, and look where they are now. It was a real chance for us to to make a claim um, for for a position within you know the test playing nations and uh, amongst the hierarchy of cricket. But um, that's how fine margins are. Um, they've gone on and done well and produced some good cricketers. Um, but I still believe we got a chance tonight. That's that's the thing. Um, they are where they are, but we are where we are. But I, th I still think we got a chance. Well, Bangladesh are one of these kind of up and down teams, you never know quite what you're going. Well, that's what to expect. We could toss a coin now. Heads, heads are going to come, turn up, you know, full of their guns, and then tails are going to be so undisciplined. So hopefully, it falls down tails. But uh, they could. It just that's the way they are. They're almost like a mini Pakistan. With all due respect to Pakistan, it can it can be that way sometimes. So hopefully, they um, they've had a bit of time off since the last game as well. So maybe catch them a little bit cold and uh, and see what happens. But they've got they've got a huge incentive, haven't they? Well, they have got huge incentive. You know, they can they can go through uh, if they beat England. I think they'll go ahead because they've got the washed out game against Australia. Australia. So, um, they can go through, but uh, they've got a lot of expectation. I remember playing against Bangladesh in uh, Kuala Lumpur uh, for World Cup qualifiers, I think 1997, and mm -hmm. we turned up to the game and there was 10,000 inside the stadium. That was before they were known. Yeah. Huge expectation back home, um, so they've got the pressure of um, of that on their shoulders as well. So, you know, all things leading towards. Um, a good night for Scotland, I think. Well, we, we could only get one of our crew accredited for the match, and we're the only journalists in town covering Scotland, so uh, that tells you how many Bangladeshi <laughs> journalists are going to be at the match. Um, just fi final question, Duncan. Um, Richie Barrington said, OK, a couple of years have gone by since he scored that century against Bangladesh, but does it make a difference... Will it make a difference to him going out there tonight knowing that he's done it before against Bangladesh? Yeah, def definitely. I, th I think all sportsmen tend to draw on you know, good past experiences and uh, yeah, I'm sure that'll be a massive help for him. Yeah, and he's, he's played well in patches so far, so hopefully he can take that on tonight. Okay. Well, we shall see. Time now for this week's Bowl Off Challenge and this week it comes with a twist as the team competing is the BBC Scotland Cricket Club. <laughs> You might be able to tell by the uh, uh, rapturous uh, applause there that there might not be a lot to look forward to this week. Um, this, uh, this week's team uh, plays here at Clydesdale. It includes a fair few people involved in the making of this series, uh, so you might just see some familiar faces. Jack McGill, part-time presenter, full-time right arm seamer. Oh, 
Tom is more leader than Joe's. Can I say more? <laughs> Oh hi, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Seth Edwards, right arm over. <laughs> Are you? Paul Moffat, actual BBC employee. Alex Lee said right arm's pretty slow. <laughs> that it came down to me in the end, but uh, I guess I have to stand up and take one for the team. There we go. Well, thank God for Captain Fantastic Alex Leithhead coming up what trumps at the end there. Let's take a look at the leaderboard and see what that does to it. Um, uh, by virtue of the editorial control of uh, Seth Edwards, BBC are not bottom of that table, but Clyde's there will remain bottom. I think that might be in alphabetical order. Air, uh, stay top uh, with four points. Next week we'll welcome East Cole Bride and see if they can dislodge Air from the top of the table. Would you believe me if I told you we hit the stumps four times in practice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No? True story. <laughs> True story. Uh, just uh, before we wrap up, guys, uh, time to ask for your predictions. Duncan, a prediction for tonight's match? I'm going to go for a change in Scotland's luck and a narrow victory. Narrow victory. Alison? I think if we get off to a good start and we can sustain that, I think that's absolutely key. And, do you know, I'm very, uh, let's go first. Let's, let's hope Scotland can do it tonight. Yes, I'll go for that. Uh, Scotland to get 275 batting first, Barrington 70 and um, <laughs> like Mackin 50 um, okay. and we win uh, in a tight finish. Uh, very specific. Let's uh, hope it can happen. Here's where you can find out if it will uh, over on Sky Sports World Cup. Starting now is the uh, live build up to the match and then ball by ball coverage. Highlights for Scottish viewers on STV tomorrow, Thursday, 11.05pm GMT. Live scores and all the other Cricket World Cup results, icc-cricket.com. Uh, also, you can download their app, which is excellent. You should try it. And if you want to keep up with all the exclusive behind-the-scenes content from the Scotland camp, then you can visit youtube.com forward slash Cricket Scotland TV. My thanks to our guests this evening, to John Blaine to Alison Walker and to Duncan Hodge. Thanks to our partners, DM Hall, Prosperity Financial Solutions, the University of West of Scotland and HF Electrical. Thanks to our hosts, Clydesdale, to my teammates in the BBC Scotland Cricket Club, to everybody here and to you at home for watching. Uh, remember, uh, you, uh, we will be back, sorry, next week on Tuesday uh, with cricket writer Tim Brooks, broadcaster Jock Brown and former Scotland Under-19 World Cup captain Kazim Farid. Uh, in the meantime, remember the hashtag follow Scotland, support the team. Good luck tonight, Scotland. From all of us here on Long Hop Down Under, have a very good evening. Thank you.